Sure, um, it's definitely a bigger concern for Google, much smaller for Alphabet, much smaller for Amazon. Specifically with, if you recall, when this all started a few months ago, the DOJ basically said they were going to take oversight over Alphabet and Apple and kind of kicked Facebook um, and Amazon over to the FTC. Um, just, you know, while antitrust is broad, there tends to be different mandates. And I think in particular, if you look at the way the App Store market works, um, you could argue that those are effectively monopolies on each device. And so could there be something there? You know, does Alphabet decide to be proactive and perhaps change some of its policies around the App Store? Um, I think that's kind of where people are focused regulatory-wise there. On Amazon, you know, again, if it's FTC, the FTC's mandate is to make sure consumers are basically being treated fairly, um, fair prices, et cetera. And if you think about Amazon's mission, it's to lower price of the consumer. So we think it would be very difficult for anything on a regulatory side to happen for Amazon, albeit acknowledging, you know, the White House has been making anti-Amazon comments recently. Let's say Alphabet goes ahead and makes those changes that, that you suggested, Jason. Does the, does the multiple go up or, or does the multiple stay the same? I'm just trying to figure out how much, how much in the multiple, because it's trading at a discount to its big, big cap uh, tech peers at this point. How much of the multiple discount is because of the slowing growth concern, which really sunk the stock after the first quarter report, and how much of it at this point is a regulatory concern? It's probably more on the former. I think generally most people think these companies can manage their way through the regulatory process. They hire lots of lawyers. Um, they're kind of very familiar with the process and know what they're willing to kind of give up to keep moving ahead with the business. Look at what happened with what Facebook announced with the FTC. Really, again, at the end of the day, it's really more about revenue. It's about cash flow. You know, this is a company that you know, search is an amazing business, incredibly high margin, but every single business Alphabet has created after search has had a lower margin. That's weighing on margin. And then at the same time, to your point, revenue growth has slowed. And they didn't really explain why. They talked about timing around certain ad products. That's very vague. So again, really it's going to be what are the numbers saying Google, uh, well, Alphabet. Mm -hmm. If revenue slows again, mm -hmm and they don't announce a buyback or some other kind of thing to address shareholder value, the stock may go lower. I want to get so far ahead of myself that it is almost inconceivable to say what I'm about to say. How's that for a <laughs> second? Wow. All right. Take, set aside any regulatory risk, but do not set aside the risk of the investment banker. I bet you there will come a day when investment bankers look at Alphabet and look at Amazon and they look at businesses that are slow growth, and they look at businesses that are fast growth. And those companies split up as a result into the slow growth businesses and the fast growth businesses. And so it would look natural to me. Right. You've got a slower growing retailer and a fast growing high margin web services company. Bam! It's a really, right there. <laughs> it's a really interesting concept, right? And it's gaining some steam, particularly from lawmakers. I'll right? take Elizabeth my millions Warren now. <laughs> break up the companies. Uh, very interesting when it comes to Amazon because the profits of AWS have powered all of these other businesses that Amazon has yes. gone into and been quite successful at advertising. That's the growth Devices. Engine. Can Amazon continue to be as innovative and go into as many businesses, groceries too, without an AWS? I don't know how shareholders. I mean, Jason, can, Jason, my horse's ass. I'm, I don't don't answer that question. <laughs> But I mean, it's, that's a it's, separate issue. It, that's a separate issue. <laughs> but but you see where I'm going, and 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 you can look back at media companies, at at conglomerates over the ages, and see that the, that the history tells you that they rarely stay intact. It's, listen, it's a it's a fair point. There are, you know, personally, all these software analysts would love for that to happen because. They would get you to cover bet. the AWS business, and we would co be covering the, the retail, the e-commerce side. Um, look, Amazon, we think, is going to try to keep their business intact for as long as they can. And remember, um, Netflix, kind of first AWS customer, competitor. Walmart, AW, early AWS customer, big competitor. So until you start to see a Netflix, uh, a Walmart say, you know what, we are not doing business with this company, then, you, then, then there's what would be the other reason, right? So we don't think it happens in the you know, investable future, at least right now.